Content marketing is everywhere. It's on most YouTube channels that you see, including this one. It's in most podcasts that you listen to. It's on most blogs that you read. It's a form of content that is both content and marketing. And you see it everywhere because it works. Likewise, email marketing is everywhere. We all have that inbox that's just full of emails that we get from companies, but those companies send those emails for one very specific reason, and that's because email marketing just works. An email subscriber is worth many multiples of just a follower on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or a subscriber on YouTube. It's just, it's there because it works. Now, freelancers, on the other hand, you haven't quite figured this out yet. You're probably the victim of content marketing, meaning you just go down the endless holes of content on YouTube or podcasts or on the internet. You're likely the victim of content marketing where you sign up for many email lists and you get a ton of emails in your inbox, but you're not utilizing these things in your business. And the thing is, for freelancers, you can make this work brilliantly if you have the right strategy. So let's chat about that. So I've got four steps for you to implement a content marketing strategy that builds an email list for your freelance business. So let's just dive right into this. Step number one is to choose your content marketing platform. There are a bunch of choose from you have podcasting, YouTube, uh, blogging. There's other areas like Clubhouse or the Clubhouse duplicates that have spurred off from Spotify and Facebook. And I think Instagram might have one now, but there's plenty of places to, for content to live. But how do you choose the best one for you? Because not all platforms are created equally for all freelancers. Some people have special gifts that others may not have. And so it's up to you to choose the right one for your skill set. But I have a framework for you to go through for you to think through and really rank the ones that might work best for you. So there's a framework out there called ICE, ICE framework. And I use this sometimes when I'm making decisions in my own business on things that I have multiple things I could go with. And I only have one that's going to be the best for me right now. And this is not the framework I'm going to use for this, but I'm going to teach you about that framework so you can utilize it. And then I'll show you the one I'm going to recommend for content marketing purposes for choosing your platform. But ICE, ICE stands for impact, confidence, and ease. I-C-E. And you would just rank that like one to five scale on your how much it's going to impact your business, how confident you are that you can actually fulfill it, and then the ease of which you do that thing. And you, if, the, the, if you have a bunch of things listed out, you give each thing a score in each of those three categories, then you have a pack leader or one or two that you can choose from at the end. I'm gonna give you a similar framework to choose from for content marketing for the platform because I think it's a little different than just the ICE framework. I have one called the much less catchy PCE framework, and it stands for passion, confidence, ease. I think when you're creating content, Passion has to come into it. Really, in any freelance business, passion comes into play a lot. But just like I like to say a lot, it takes more than just passion. So P, passion. List all of the potential platforms that your content could live on. YouTube, podcast, uh, blogging, a clubhouse or some other live medium or really anything that you can think of that you might want to regularly create content for content marketing purposes, list out your potential options and then list from a one to five scale, one being the least passionate and five being the most passionate, which of these platforms are you most passionate about? Uh, that could be if you just love consuming video and you just think that that's the, the, the area for you, put a five there. Maybe podcasting is the, the platform for you. Maybe that's the thing that you just love consuming a lot of. It's the thing you're familiar with. You know what really works for you and what doesn't. So Rank those things one to five for passion. Number two is confidence. Rank each of these platforms based on how confident you are that you can perform for that platform. And believe me, it is a performance. Whether you're writing in a blog, whether you're podcasting, whether you're making a video, you have to be engaging, you have to be confident, you have to be, have some sort of it factor when it comes to uh, creating the content. Now, I'm not saying that I'm an expert in this area. I still struggle just like anyone else, but I do know that I have I'm better on audio than video, but you're likely watching this on YouTube right now. So you can kind of see uh, what I'm up to on the confidence side of things. So put really one to five. Where are you in terms of confidence that you can perform on this specific platform? One being the lowest, five being the most confidence. And then number, th number three is ease. One to five, what's the easiest to hardest of these platforms for you. So something like YouTube could be the hardest because you have to have audio, you have to have good video, you have to have good lighting. All of these things can take a lot of time, but that doesn't mean you, you can't do it with just an iPhone. A lot of my videos on this YouTube channel are just filmed on my iPhone. So don't let that hold you back if you don't have some crazy camera um, or crazy lighting set up or any of the stuff that I have going on in here. You can do a lot with a little when it comes to video, uh, but podcasting is the same thing. I have an audio engineering background. That's kind of where I came up in the freelancing world. So it wasn't that much work for me to put out a podcast because I'm very familiar with all the audio gear needed for a podcast. And I owned most of it already as well. Look through all the platforms that you could do and rank one as the hardest platform. That's the least one that you might want to do as far as ease and five being the easiest platform. 
Platforms like Clubhouse, by the way, all you need is an iPhone and then to just be on the platform live to talk. It's probably the easiest of all the platforms, but it's also the one that has the least certain future. So that may not be the area that you wanna put your content on there. If you're really stuck and you're not sure where to go, I personally am trying to do YouTube. I like the idea of YouTube as a, as a long-term platform just because it is the number two most visited website in the world and you get the long-term search impact that you don't really get with podcasting, with social media, or some of these live platforms. Whereas when you create a piece of content on YouTube, people can find it for years to come. And so for that, I like YouTube and I'm trying to create more content for YouTube. Step number two is to plan your content. This is the most obvious part of content marketing, but you have to have content if you're gonna use content as a way to get your name to your ideal client. So the, I have four buckets of potential content ideas for you to really map out. And this is for you to go through on your own time. It's gonna take more than just watching this YouTube video to figure this stuff out. But there is uh, four here. I'm gonna read through these for you just to go through. The first bucket is create thinking through the content through the lens of what steps do your clients need to take before they can hire you for whatever service that you provide? So for example, my past life, I was a music producer. And as a music producer, my clients, musicians, had to have a lot of things in order before they could actually hire me. So think through the steps of the things they have to get done. So they had to have songs written. They had to have lyrics written. They had to have maybe pre-production done. They might have even had to get got signed or raise money through Kickstarter or some other means. These are all things that I could potentially create content or partner with somebody to create content for. So think through your business. If you're a wedding photographer, there's a lot of steps that they have to do before they can actually hire you for wedding for your for the weddings. For a logo designer, they have to if it's a new businesses you're working with, they have to get the LLC or maybe they have to be a sole proprietor or S Corp. They have a lot of questions they have to answer and a lot of steps that lead up before they can actually hire you. But think through what are the crucial steps before they can even hire me that have to be done. A lot of those are great content ideas for you to go through. Bucket number two is what problem or problems can you actually help them solve? So content is really, if it serves a couple of purposes, but the most obvious is helping people solve problems. If you're watching this, it might be because you have no idea how to do content marketing or how to build an email list, but you know the power of both of those things. So this video is hopefully helping you overcome some of those problems. So think through what problems you can actually help your ideal client solve. And this should even, before we even got, it, got into this section, I should have mentioned that you should have a very clear understanding of the specific type of client that you're going after. And this is really the power of a niche or niche comment below, however you like to say it. I like to say niche now. I go back and forth all the time. But the power of niching down is you have a very specific type of customer or client that you're working with, and it comes a lot easier to answer these questions. So that's just kind of a side note. So bucket number two is what problems can you actually help them solve? Bucket number three are what roadblocks can you help them to avoid? So what are those sticky situations that you can help them avoid? This is great for whenever they see a piece of content that's like, oh, that's a that's something I might run into in the future. I'm going to consume that. Nice to know content. It really may not be something that they are going to experience anytime soon, but these are really easy kinds of videos or podcasts or blog articles or things to create content around. It's just roadblocks that you can help them avoid. And they're grateful if you can genuinely help them avoid roadblocks, roadblocks that set them back. Now, this is doubly important. If these are roadblocks that hold them back from actually hiring you, you're helping them overcome obstacles that limit them from ever hiring you in the first place, that's a gold mine when it comes to content creation. And bucket number four, this is the last one I'm gonna cover here, is what goals can you help them accomplish? This is just another framework of thinking through some of the things that, that your client's going through. But a lot of times your client has like, first tier goals. So like they would hire me as a music producer because they want a song produced, right? That's like the first tier goal. So that's, that's a goal that I'm helping them accomplish. But ultimately they have larger goals that are, are tied to that. They want to tour. They want to get signed. They want to get a booking agent. They want to tour the world. They want to gain fans. They want to gain followers. They want to get streams. They want to sell albums. These are all longer term goals. And why I mean, I might not be an expert of all of these. I know some of those things because my background before being a music producer was being a musician. So I knew that avatar very, very well. So it was easy for me to create sorts of content around that area. And you can do the same for your, for your types of clients. What short term, long term, medium term goals, what goals do they have before they hire you, after they hire you? These are all great areas for you to look to for creating content. So just list out a bunch of ideas. You don't have to come up with a full content idea yet, but just come up with like a title, like a, a, a headline for a, a blog article or a title for a YouTube video. Just list out five to 10 for each of these four buckets and you have almost a year's worth of content right there. So, so far you've chosen your platform of choice. You have a plan for your content. You have a, a general idea of what kind of content you can create. So that's 
two steps down. So step number three now is to create your carrot or your lead magnet, in other words. I like to use the word carrot because it's like you're dangling a carrot in front of somebody to try to get them to take the next step in your relationship with them. Uh, you know what a lead magnet is most likely. You've signed, you put your name and email address in for some sort of thing behind a, uh, a registration wall. This is a lead magnet. This is the part where you actually build your mailing list. Without this, you're just gaining relatively meaningless followers on social media or relatively meaningless subscribers on YouTube. It's a thing that's not really pushing your business forward. The email list is where the power is for any online business. And freelancing, by the way, in a lot of cases, is an online business, whether you think it that way or not. A lot of freelancers these days find all their clients online, and there are still a few freelancers who who just work hyper locally. Still, you can use a strategy, and an email list is a huge part of a long-term sustainable business as a freelancer. Now, your carrot, that you dangle at the end of the stick has to be a very powerful thing. And I encourage you to go through what I call your crunchiest carrot. Your crunchiest carrot is that list you just created in step number two, when you're planning your content, find the thing that is the, the crunchiest, biggest, most helpful thing that you can help that person with and use that as your lead magnet, as your carrot that you put behind a registration wall. And this is what you're gonna use moving forward to get people onto your email list. If you don't pick something that's genuinely helpful, genuinely useful, and something desirable for your ideal client, they're never gonna sign up for your mailing list. The worst carrot I can possibly imagine that I see a ton of people using for some reason is join our newsletter, sign up for our newsletter. No one has ever said, God, I just, I just need a newsletter. Please, God, give me a newsletter. Oh, thank God. Thank God this wedding photographer has a newsletter for me. <laughs> I can't wait to read this long after I'm married. No, no one's ever done that. So a carrot, a juicy, crunchy carrot, that's a terrible analogy, or your lead magnet has to be very desirable. Once you've chosen your crunchiest carrot, you need to choose the medium of which you're going to deliver that carrot. Now, the easiest and most obvious is a PDF of some sort. It can be a checklist. It can be a short guide, hopefully not a long ebook. People don't really want to read long ebooks anymore, but it can also be a video series. It can be an email mini course. It can be any number of things, but the simplest and most obvious is just a PDF of some sort. The thing that's going to, you can show them and say, Hey, you can get this thing. Just go to this website and sign up for it. And it'll deliver it to you instantly into your inbox. And that leads us to our third part of creating your carrot. And that is set up auto delivery. That is where on your homepage, your landing page that you send them to. So your website.com slash carrot, please don't use that URL, but you know what I mean? Slash carrot. They go there and it's like, get our crunchy ass carrot. And then under there, it's like bullet point one. It's the crunchiest carrot you ever saw. Bullet point two. It's also very orange and healthy looking. Carrot number, <laughs> bullet number three. It's also got a lot of vitamin A and D and C. I don't know what vitamins are in carrots. And then put your name and email address in or just your email address in and sign up and you'll get this crunchy carrot. Sit straight to your inbox. Someone puts their email address in and it says, thanks, we got your email address. Go check your inbox now. And in their inbox, it's shown up in a little download link for them to get. That's super easy to set up through something like MailChimp. I believe MailChimp has a way to do that. I use my own platform for this. We have a platform called easyfunnels.io. It's all built in the email marketing, the email list, the website building, the forms, all this stuff's incorporated in there under one thing. So go check that out if that's something you need to have all in one place. But most email marketing platforms have a way to deliver the thing that you're giving away automatically. So go set that up so you don't have to do this manually because there's no way you can do this. Every time you have to manually do a process in your business, that's taking away from doing the thing that you're actually getting hired to do, which is the creative freelance service that you provide. So set this up to automatically deliver the lead magnet or the carrot so that you don't have to think about this once they sign up. And this is the really the most important step to getting an automated marketing email list set up so that you can get more clients for your freelance services. So by now we have chosen the platform that you're gonna put your content on. You've created a content plan of some sort. You've chosen the most crunchy piece of carrot content from there and created a lead magnet from that and set up auto delivery and all that fun stuff. And then the fourth and final step is to promote this. You have this juicy, wonderful carrot lead magnet thing. I don't know why I keep using the word juicy, but it's crunchy and it's delicious and you're gonna give it away. You have to promote it. And there's two parts of promotion on this. There's first is the initial push. This is the short term thing that you're going to use social media, any communities you're a part of anywhere you have a following of some sort, promote it. 
This is a great time to go to Facebook communities that contain your ideal customers or clients and put the content on there, the lead magnet that you're giving away. But use this time to promote the thing that you just created. Don't be ashamed. This is something that's genuinely helpful, genuinely valuable. You're being a go-giver here and giving away something for free that you took time to create. And by the way, you did take time to create a valuable piece of content, not a piece of crap content. No one needs any more crap content that's on the internet right now. You created a genuinely valuable piece of content you put a lot of time and effort and energy into and it solves a genuine problem that they have and now you're promoting it social media any sort of niche communities or niche communities you're a part of and any other platforms you regularly use so that's the easy short term like you're done and now this is where most people stop but this is where content marketing comes back in it's a cyclical thing you create content that then helps them solve a problem then it then gets them on your your email list because of your lead magnet, your carrot, and then you create more content. And this is just a loop you go through over and over again. Every piece of content can build that mailing list a, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So this is where we have to get into our long-term growth mode. And this is where we have to create consistent content. And if you did all the exercises from step two, you have a, a four or five buckets you've gone through and you've met, mapped out five to 10 different types of topics or ideas for videos or blog articles or podcast episodes. And you should have almost a year's worth of content just from that. So at this point, we're going to put this out every single week, ideally every single week. But we have I have a specific framework that I follow in videos now. And then sometimes on podcasts, we do this. We're a little more lax on the podcast side of things. But it, I follow this in this exact video you're watching right now. I follow this. Uh, so every single week, you outline it in this format. Hook. So what is the thing that's going to draw them in? What's the benefit of watching the video or listening to the episode of the podcast or reading the blog, blog article? What's the hook? What's in it for them? What's in it for you, the person watching right now? I did this earlier in the video. If you go back and watch it, you can kind of figure that out. Uh, the second part is the content. I map out three to five points of content that's going to be interesting and relevant to the thing that I'm trying to teach them or, or the roadblock I'm trying to help them avoid or the goal I'm helping them reach, uh, get towards. So that's the content. That's the meat of it. That's the most of it. That's the part we're on right now. And the third section of the piece of content that I create or you create is the call to action, the CTA. And this is very important because without this, you're not building your mailing list. This is where you promote your crunchy, crunchy carrot, <laughs> the, the, the vitamin nutritious carrot at the end of your videos, this is where you say, by the way, if you are interested in this, you'll love this thing that I just made, this delicious carrot. If you just go to mywebsite.com slash carrot, you can go download it right now and it'll show up straight to your inbox and it'll help you solve these specific problems. If you do this consistently over time, you will build your mailing list. As long as you're creating genuinely helpful things, you've picked the right platform for your personality, for your skill set, for your passions, and you've created, and this is probably the most important part, a process for continually putting out content. This is, can be a very valuable way to not only get your name out there and become a known person in your niche, but also build this mailing list that can be super powerful in the future. Now, you can do a lot once you have, you have this mailing list. You can put them through like an automated email sequence. I don't have time to go in that right now. If you want really any help on any of these four areas, just leave a comment below on if you're watching this on YouTube and let me know what areas you need more help in. But just these four steps alone should get you 90 to 95% of the way there. It's not incredibly difficult. The technology has made this more and more easy to do every single year. Something comes out to make this stuff easier. It's just about consistency and understanding the strategy behind what you're doing. One of the most important parts of a content marketing strategy and an email list building strategy is having a website that actually turns strangers into customers. At a certain point, you've hired all of your, all your, all your friends have hired you and you have to move on to strangers hiring you as a freelancer. And this is where your website is an important part of the sales process for getting them from stranger to customer. Furthermore, if you want a place for your lead magnet, your crunchy, crunchy, crunchy carrot that you just created to live, you need a place for it to live on your website is an incredible place for that to live. So if you don't have a website yet or a website you're happy with at least, or your website that you've created sucks and doesn't have all the elements of a mailing list and email marketing and marketing automation and headline and the forms, if this isn't all the stuff that you need for your website, I have created a three day website creation challenge where it goes through all the process you need to build a website from the ground up and it does it as easily as possible. So just go to easyfunnels.io slash challenge and you can sign up for the three day challenge there. On day one, we work on planning what I call creating your blueprint for your website where we help you choose a website builder, mapping out the web pages and sections, determining what your website needs and what can wait for later. Day two is all about copywriting. So we need to write the words that are going to go on your website. So this is for all of you who don't, who already have a website and maybe your website is 
not really optimized for converting a stranger into a client. So day two is beneficial for those who need better copy on your website. So headlines, subheadlines, call to actions. And day three is where we build the website, where we put all of our hard work together from start to finish. And I give you a checklist for perfecting your website at the very end. So just go to easyfunnels.io slash challenge and you can get that right now. So that's it. Four steps to create your content marketing strategy. You have a three-day website creation challenge to go through if you need help building a website. Easyfunnels.io, if you need a place for your mailing list to live, we give you 100 free contacts on there so you can have your mailing list for free, up to 100 contacts, and all the tools you need to deliver the lead magnet from start to finish. Hopefully this is helpful. Take care.